In this video we're going to look at objects that are attached to each other by a string or maybe they're resting right next to one another or something like that and as a result they move together they're going to accelerate together um, one way or the other but at the same time because they're separate objects they might have different forces acting on them so they are looking at different forces um, this could be like a train where you consider the train cars separate from the train itself or this could be like two blocks that are pushing e pushing against each other across the top of a table or it could be um, what we're going to start with is some pulley systems like this where maybe there's a five kilogram object attached to a fixed pulley that's hanging in the air and a ten kilogram object and because they have the string attaching them they're going to move together the basic premise here is we're going to treat this system like it's one big object. So this big thing is going to be like a 15 kilogram object. And then we're going to say if we imagine that this force of gravity is going to pull down this way and this force of gravity is going to pull down that way, they're sort of pulling in opposite directions, we're going to put the forces that are opposing each other or working together on the total object. With that we're going to find a net force and an acceleration and then what we're going to do is if we had a known acceleration we're going to go back and look at just a component of this system with a known acceleration now and use that to find the forces acting on that object in more detail. So let's look at what that looks like in an actual problem. So there you go, 5 kilogram, 10 kilogram just as I drew before and we're going to determine the acceleration and that tension in that wire, or the force in this wire right here. So if I treat the system as a whole, it's one 15 kilogram object. If I had a force of gravity acting on that 10 kilogram object, it would be Fg equals negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the kilograms, which is negative 98 newtons. And similarly for this 5 kilogram force, the force of gravity would be negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the 5 kilograms or negative 49 newtons. I'm just going to redraw that over here. So there's our 15 kilogram object. And if we think about that, these two forces are opposing each other. When I do this diagram for the object as a whole, I'm not really paying that close attention to what direction things are happening in, but what's important about it is if things are pulling one way or pulling the other way, that I have them opposing each other on this diagram. So imagine this is 98 newtons, and imagine it's being opposed by this 49 newtons. I need to make one of these negative, and I'm just going to make the 49 negative because it'll uh, work out to positive numbers. With that in mind, my net force acting on the object will be the sum of those forces. Since they're in opposite directions, that sum will be 49 newtons. And then I can use F net. I can actually give myself a little bit more space again. F net equals ma and I can come up with the acceleration. So it's a 49 Newton force trying to accelerate, or 49 Newton difference in forces trying to accelerate all 15 kilograms of that system. So I can come up with an acceleration. And it works out to 3.27. Now, with that in hand, if I want to know the tension in the string, I can't do it when I'm looking at the system as a whole. I have to look at just an individual piece of the system. I could have chosen the 5 kilogram block, but I'll choose the 10 kilogram block. There's no good reason for that. I have to pick one or the other. If, I have to, if I'm looking at the 10 kilogram object, and recall it's negative 98 newton force, it's got some force of tension acting up on it. That's the part I'm trying to figure out right now. 
But what I do know is that it's accelerating at 3.27 meters per second squared. Now I need to be careful here because when I did the forces at this point, I wasn't particularly careful about direction. So now I have to think about this. If I look at the system, I can see from a common sense perspective that the 10 kilogram object is going to move down. And so this acceleration is negative 3.27 meters per second squared, or down. Using that, I can come up with a net force. And with the net force, I have some force acting down and some force acting up. So I can solve for the one missing force, which is the force of tension. Now I'm careful here. I have a lot of negatives going on and stuff, so I'm going to use the equation to make sure I get it right. And that force of tension would work out to a positive 65.3 newtons. So there I have my force of tension and my acceleration. And I think it sort of makes sense that that force of tension is somewhere in between the two gravitational forces. It's enough on the 5 kilogram object to pull it upwards a little bit, and enough on the 10 kilogram object to pull it downwards a little bit. Okay, let's look at one more here. Given the system in the diagram below, assuming the frictional force is zero, so I'm just going to ignore friction, determine the acceleration of the blocks and the tension in the wire. Now your temptation here might be to say, well, don't I just have an object in free fall? Shouldn't it just accelerate at negative 9.8 meters per second squared? But if I look at it a little bit more carefully, I recognize that that 10 kilogram force of gravity, negative 98 newtons or negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the 10 kilograms, usually would just be accelerating that same 10 kilogram mass, but essentially it has to drag this other mass along with it, and that's going to cause it to get slowed down and accelerate a little bit slower than otherwise you would have expected it to. So let's follow our steps here. Number one, we'll treat the system as if it's one big object, 15 kilograms, and a 98 newton force accelerating it along. And because that 5 kilogram object is sitting on top of the surface, the force of gravity and the normal force would be equal and opposite. And the force of friction, we basically said was zero. So that's it for the forces acting on that object that are external to the system. And so there's no real resistive force here. F net then would be your negative 98 newtons. And that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration, where my mass is the mass of the entire system, the 15 kilograms. So I get an acceleration of 6.53, negative, because it's going down based on the way I've drawn it. Um, but again, I haven't been totally careful with directions here, because remember, the 10 kilogram objects go in one way, the 5 kilogram objects go in the other. So this, isn't, this doesn't totally tell us the story. Um, you have to interpret the direction when you go to do the next part. For the next part, I have to look at one of these objects, and that makes that force of tension outside of the system. And as a result, it'll allow us to calculate that. Last time I did the hanging 10 kilogram object, so this time I'll look at it from the 5 kilogram object perspective. Again, normal force, force of gravity, I'm not going to put them on because they're not affecting the motion. The acceleration here is going to be to the right at 6.53 meters per second squared. And you might be saying, how do I know it's to the right? Well, just look at the system. If that 10 kilogram object pulls it down, it's going to the right. The only force acting on that 5 kilogram object besides that normal gravity that I'm knowing or that I'm ignoring is the force of tension. 
So if my net force, F net, is equal to MA, then I've got 5 kilograms times 6.53 meters per second squared, and a net force of 32.65. So that 32.65 newtons would be accelerating that 5 kilogram object to the side, and that's the force of tension. Net force and force of tension are the same because we're assuming it's the only force acting on it. These questions are nice because they have a nice built-in check. If that force of tension is acting on the 5 kilogram object, it has to be the same force of tension that's acting on the 10 kilogram object. If it's pulling here that hard, it's going to pull back here with that same, um, same strength. So if I know those two things, the force of tension and the force of gravity, then I can go ahead and get a net force. In this case would be negative 65.35. And if you use F equals MA, If I've done this correctly, the acceleration that I get, considering the tension force, should be the same as the acceleration that I got when I did it in the first place. Now you can't help it, you look at this decimal point right here and you think that's not the exact same, but don't worry, that's just a rounding error. And there you have it. So you treat the system as a whole, you find the acceleration, using the acceleration you break the system into two individual pieces and get internal forces. And then if you have the internal force, whichever one you looked at, you can look at the other one and check with that internal force to make sure you get the same acceleration. And if you do, then you've done it correctly.